Hello guys, welcome back to Beyond the Realms, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Blu-ray 3D version of Dread. Dread is a film that came out last year and unfortunately totally bombed at the box office. It didn't even get close to recouping its $45 million budget. It disappeared quickly, but for those that did see it, it got a lot of high praise. Like, you know, everybody I know that saw this film just went on and on about it. But it just it was just didn't catch on with the public. Um, I really wanted to get out and see this film, but I just didn't get the chance to. You know, I can't get out and see every film that I would like to. Um, it's just impossible for me to. Um, so I was very anxious to pick this up when it came out. Uh, but, you know, I guess first off we have to say this film is kind of a remake. And the reason why I say kind of is because... You know, there was a film called Judge Dredd in the early 90s starring Sylvester Stallone. Um, garbage film. It's just bad. Uh, but really, this isn't a remake because this is the true, real, faithful adaptation to the comic book. Um, now, I haven't read the comic book myself, but everybody I know that has says that this is pretty damn close. And, you know, Judge Dredd in the 90s, it just was not whatsoever. So really not a remake, just finally a good version of what it should have been from the get-go. Uh, but for those of you that don't know about this story, it takes place in the future. America's basically just been destroyed. Um, there's only like, I think, 800 million people left. Um, and they basically took and walled in this gigantic city called Mega City One. And within this city, there are these structures called Mega Blocks, which are, I mean, gigantic structures where millions of people live. And uh, they're so vast that they say some, you know, some people are born and die in these things and don't even, you know, come out of them at all. They're so big. Uh, and crime is just rampant everywhere. There's like over 17,000 serious crimes a day. So the judges, as they're called, they have to pick and choose which ones that they go to. And they are basically given complete powers, judge, jury, and execution. Like if they see somebody killing another person, they have the authority to just kill the person on the spot and not even worry about taking them in. Um, and uh, there is a woman in this film named uh, Madeline Madrigal, um, which she goes by Mama. Um, she is head of this crime organization that runs one of these mega blocks called Peachtree, I believe it's Peachtree Grove. I know it's Peachtree something, but I think it's Peachtree Grove. But she basically is in charge of this entire mega block. Um, there was like three different clans that ran this place, and she went in with her ruthless and uh, just totally violent nature. She took over the entire mega block. And um, she has these three guys killed. Um, they're thrown off the top. So Dredd goes in with a new apprentice named Anderson, and they're going to try to figure out what's going on. All along, there is this new drug out called Slow Mo, where it's basically this inhaler. You inhale it, and it slows everything down in your brain to move at only 1% of what it normally would. So it just makes everything in extreme slow motion. It's very addictive, and it's catching on quick. Um, so. They go and they these guys. They knew these these guys were on this drug, and um, they're trying to figure out what's going on. They find one of the perpetrators. They're going to take him for questioning, but before they can do so, Mama shuts the place down, completely barricades it off, cuts off all or the scrambles the radios so they can't get help, and she says over the intercom of the whole place. Um, I want these judges dead. This place will be locked down until they're dead. If you get in the way, you'll be killed, and also your next whole generation of your family will be killed. Um, that's that's what she says, you know, what ends up happening. So the judges have to figure out how to get out of this and also try to bring down Mama. Um, now, uh, you know, Carl Urban as, as Dredd is really awesome. Um, I can see how some people may not like him so well. He's very robotic, very monotone, but I like that about him because he's just to the point. He's all business all the time. You never see him without, a, without his helmet. I really like that. Carl Urban did a great job in this character. Um, just excellent. Uh, his sidekick, Anderson, which was played by Olivia Thrillby, um, very good also, very young. She, she has this psychic ability. She's like one of the best psychics ever. Uh, she's able to see and 
uh, what people have done, read their thoughts. Um, so she, she comes along to help dress. She's a young 21 year old apprentice. Um, and you have, uh, let's see what's her name, Lena Hetty, which I remember most as um, uh, from 300. Um, she was the, the uh, is it Leonidas' wife? Um, but yeah, she's, she's great in this as Mama. And, you know, Mama is, you know, they talk about how she raised to the top um, just by her just complete brutal violence of taking anybody out at all. That's how she took over everything. But by the time, you know, they kind of show a little backstory on her, but by the time the film starts, she is just a strung out drug addict on this slow-mo stuff. Um, she's still ruthless without a doubt. She's still in control, but she's, well, I should say in control of her gang, but she's totally not in control of herself. Um, she's just very strung out, um, very easy to tell that. Uh, but Lena Headey plays her very well. I really liked her in this role. Actually, this is one of my favorite roles that I've seen her in. She just plays a good, bad character. <laughs> uh, you know, from the first season of Game of Thrones, she was excellent in that. Um, I haven't seen any more past the first season, and I can't speak past that. But she's excellent in that, and she's even better in this, I think. But guys, this movie is absolutely, brutally violent. I was surprised how violent this film was. Um, you know, I mean, it really harkens back to like RoboCop, which, you know, I've come to find out from my good friend, Bobby Morgan, that I didn't know this, that, uh, Judge Dredd comic book was actually the influence for RoboCop and you can totally see it in this. I mean, even in Dredd's actions, like there's even a part where he says, you know, you have 20 seconds to comply. I mean, that's totally RoboCop, you know, but if you like RoboCop, you will like this. Um, you know, I just, I really hope more people check this out and I really hope that it really catches on on home video format because I would love to see a sequel to this movie, guys. I mean, the part also I have to mention, the slow-mo parts when they take that drug, you like are seeing what the person is, is experiencing. Everything slows down on screen. Everything moves at an extremely slow pace. And also, all the colors are heightened. Like, they all brighten up. The contrast is extremely blown out. Um, it, it just, you know, you're feeling what the drug addict feels, and it really works in this film, especially in the 3D. Um, you know, it, it's neat because, you know, it has the slow motion moments like a lot of modern films does, but it totally plays into the story and what they're doing. It doesn't just feel like a gimmick, you know, to, to show off special effects. It really feels like, you know, it, it really is a part of the story, and it is. Um, but, guys, there's people thrown off buildings. There's head exploding. There's, there's one part with the slow-mo, i got to tell you, where a guy gets shot through the cheek, and it goes extremely slow and shows it bust out the other side. A whole side of his cheek comes out. You see his teeth in there and how they're shattered from the bullet also. Um, it's just violent, man. I mean, it's violent, and, and it's fun. I mean, it's still extremely fun also. You know, it's not like it's a down and depressing type violence. It's a fun type violence. Um, this is a total guy action film. I mean, it really is, you know. I mean, if you're into, you know, comic book style films, and all that, you're probably going to like this also. It, it has that comic book element because it is based after comic books, but it's much more violent than most comic book films, if not the most violent one I've seen. Um, and I love the gritty shooting, uh, or the way it's shot, the cinematography. It has a real grainy grittiness to it. Um, it just looks like, you know, how it should for it being such a violent time. It's such a post-apocalyptic nature. It doesn't look overly sleek or anything like that. It really, you know, it's gritty. It's grimy, exactly how it should look. Um, the 3D on this, guys, is excellent. Very, very good 3D, especially with the slow-mo parts. It just looks so damn good. Um, I was very impressed with the 3D. Um, you know, special features, there's, there's not a lot on here, but, you know, what you do get is pretty cool. It talks about how... Uh, one of them is called Mega City Masters, 30, 35 Years of Judge Dredd Featurette. Kind of like 10-minute little uh, take on Judge Dredd. They show some of the comics and stuff like that. It's, you know, not very in-depth, but still cool, especially for somebody like me that knows nothing about the comic. Um, Day of Chaos, Visual Effects of Dredd Featurette. 
Um, that, that talks about how they use these cameras in this that could film 4,000 frames per second. It was like the first film that's ever used these cameras. It's like the most high-tech slow motion that's ever been used. And I will say it is certainly the best I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of, you know, like the Resident Evil and stuff like that. But this really takes it to a whole different level. I mean, it, it's it, you can tell that they use something different in this. Um, then there's a Dread feature. That's really short, only like two minutes long. Dread's gear, same thing. And the third dimension, same thing. Really short, talking about the challenges of filming this in 3D uh, with the heavy-ass cameras and all that. Peach Trees, that's the name of it, the name of the uh, mega, mega block. Welcome to Peach Trees featurette. Um, a Dread motion comic prequel, which it's only a couple minutes long, I think five minutes, uh, shows stuff about Mama and just like, you know, stuff leading up to this. Um, but guys, it's a short film. Uh, well, not a short film, but not as long as you expect. It's only 96 minutes. It gets in, gets out quick. It hits you hard, and it leaves you wanting more, but I think that's what's great about it. I watched this two times in two days. I, I got it. I watched it last night. I loved it. I watched it again tonight before, just before I reviewed it, because I just love the film so much. It's just an excellent film, and this will be spinning a lot here in my house. Um, I give this film a nine out of ten, guys, and I highly recommend going out and picking this up. Don't even rent it; just go pick it up. You know, support this film because, man, if you see it, you will understand. And I and I, and I really believe everybody that watches this will be hoping for a sequel also because, man, there's so many different angles they could go with this film, and so much more that they could show. Um, so yeah, guys, Dread gets my highest recommendation, guys. Check it out for sure. Have a good one, guys. Later.